Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another week of online instruction. So I am um, want to tell you about this week. Um, we're really just reviewing for the AP exam. We're going to do some more practice. Um, so we're going to start the week off with uh, a little bit of review so you can um, make that little cheat sheet of yours. Uh, you know, most students, because this is an online and open note test, are going to have a lot of resources right next to them. So I really recommend that you, um, <clears throat> you know, have some important information out there so you don't have to go through all of your notes to get to it. So uh, I'm going to highlight some of that every week, what I think might be some good things to put on there. So um, this week, which is about biochemical pathways um, and energy flow. So um, so do the review. That's supposed to help you um, kind of make, make that cheat sheet. Um, then we're going to do an FRQ practice, uh, and this one we're going to do a little differently. It's about experimental design, but I want you to, um, you're going to answer part of the question, and then you're going to immediately grade it and get some immediate feedback. There's also some student examples in there, so you can get a really good idea of, of what kind of answers you need to write. Um, then we're going to, uh, I got a uh, a presentation on tips on writing a good FRQ. And you should really look at that because remember, that's all there is on this test, two FRQs. You've got to get really good at it. Um, and, and you've done a good job this year, so you're going to do fine. But I've I've pulled together all of my best advice for writing FRQs. So watch that presentation. Um, also, um, on our last FRQ, if you wrote a question at the bottom of your FRQ, um, make sure you look at my comments because I went and I answered all those questions in the comments. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you here? Uh, after we do that next FRQ, the one that you're going to be grading little by little, at the end of the week or anytime you want to do it, we got one more FRQ. And that one I'm going to grade myself um, entirely because I want to make sure I give each one of you some very specific feedback on how you're doing. And that one isn't uh, an experimental design. That one's really about um, proposing solutions and uh, talking about consequences. So um, that's it for the week. I do want to give you uh, a, some specific advice for some people who need it for uh, designing experiments. So uh, if you feel great about that, then, uh, then that's it. And I'll see you in a little while. Um, otherwise, stick around. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to give you a couple more pointers. So stay tuned. We are back inside and I want to give you guys a few pointers for those of you who had some extra questions about the uh, experimental design. So um, a lot of people were still having problems with dependent and independent variables. So independent variable, that's the one that's always going to go down here. Independent variable. It's the one that you're changing, remember? So if uh, in, if you're going to use uh, hair tonic versus not hair tonic, does hair tonic um, make your hair grow faster? Well, ideally, and this is a way to improve an experiment, you'll want to just use hair tonic versus not hair tonic. You want to go um, different intervals of hair tonic. So let's say we're going to have, you know, um, a 50% solution of hair tonic here and a 75% solution of hair tonic here, and then 100% of hair tonic there, and then here's 0% solution of a hair tonic. This would be your control, right? And then here's your three different, um, your three different trials. Um, this would be your independent variable. That's the one you're changing. This is your control. Absolutely no hair tonic. Um, what are you going to measure, though? Because you're going to use the hair tonic and you can see if it works. So what are you going to measure? You're going to measure the length of the hair, right? And so that's your dependent variable. Whatever you're measuring is going to go on the left, on the uh, y-axis there, because if you have something like this, what does that actually mean? It means that as you change the independent variable, the dependent variable goes up. So the more and more hair tonic you use, the more your um, the more hair tonic you use, the, or the more hair tonic you use here, more hair grows here. Um, so that was one thing that people had questions on. Also about the control. Um, 
It's what you're going to compare with, right? These values should be higher than the value that had nothing in it. Uh, to improve an experiment, a lot of you guys said they had, you had difficulty with that, but you came up with great improvements. One way you can always improve an experiment is to increase the number of trials. Rather than doing it once, do it 10 times. Um, but of course, always in, uh, making it so that the, the independent variable is changed incrementally is also another great way of doing it. Uh, one thing you should also never, ever say in experiment is prove. Nothing ever proves anything. Your data are going to, is either going to support your hypothesis or not support your hypothesis. Don't say prove. Um, I think that was about it. Um, larger sample size. That's it. Um, sometimes your control it's a little bit more confusing because in the case of the itching powder, the control was the regular itching powder. But then if you wanted to see if using more made you itch more, well then your control would be the regular, nothing's changed, so you still gotta use itching powder. And then using more itching powder would be um, your independent variable. So that might've been a little confusing for some of you. Of course, if any of this is still confusing, please contact me, talk to my office hours. Um, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you soon.